Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Preacher Boys podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about a Law and Order SVU episode that actually references the Duggars by name and takes a lot of influence from the real life story. But before I do that, I want to reintroduce myself to new listeners of the show. I know in the last two months specifically, there have been many of you that have tuned in to YouTube specifically for the first time. There's been I think about 1,500 people in the last two months that have subscribed to this channel. So welcome. And uh, and there's been a ton more that have joined in over on the audio version of the podcast. So allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Eric Skorzynski. I am a former fundamentalist who grew up within the Independent Fundamental Baptist Movement, a denomination that some people might refer to as a cult. And on this show, I talk to a lot of survivors within the Independent Fundamental Baptist Movement. I talk to experts on things like uh, clergy abuse, on narcissism, on trauma recovery, and so much more. And lately, I've been interviewing a lot of people who maybe didn't grow up within the Independent Fundamental Baptist Movement, or IFB for short, but grew up in things like Mormonism or Scientology or Nexium, uh, working with organizations that are culty, domineering, uh, have really uh, horrific purity culture that affects people in negative ways. So anywhere there's a crossover into religious abuse and uh, a lot of times abuse by clergy themselves, this show will probably cover it. So with all that out of the way, I wanted to go ahead and dive into today's topics. Now, if this is your first time listening, every single Sunday I do an interview with somebody like the types of people I mentioned before. But on these Wednesday episodes, I really take a more topical approach with just myself, occasionally a guest but usually just breaking down a smaller topic in a more compact way. These episodes might talk about more indirect connections, like the episode I'm doing today. They might talk about a specific thought or something that I had based on a conversation with a guest, but these are more from my thoughts to you. And so if you're not going to hear just from me, be sure to go tune into one of the interview episodes that drops every single Sunday. But on today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about a show called Law & Order SVU. Now, Law & Order SVU has been on television for 26 seasons, and in that time frame, they've ripped a lot of stories from major news headlines. Everything from the Chris Brown domestic abuse case to Michael Jackson has been covered at some point. Of course, it was only a matter of time before they would tackle one of America's favorite fundamentalist families, the Duggars. In 2014, the Duggars were seemingly on top of the world. Variety was reporting that their hit show, 19 Kids and Counting, was averaging over 3 million viewers per episode, which was smashing their previous records for earlier seasons. But then, in May 2015, the news broke that as a teenager, Josh Tugger had sexually assaulted at least five girls between 2002 and 2003. Some of these victims were his sisters. On three separate occasions, Josh Duggar confessed to his father he'd molested his sisters. Three times he told Jim Bob Duggar what he'd done. That's according to a police report obtained by In Touch magazine. The same day this was all revealed to the public, Josh resigned as executive director of FRC Action, a political lobbying organization sponsored by the Family Research Council. This would mark the first of many scandalous stories to break about Josh over the next couple of years. In August of that year, a data breach revealed Duggar's credit card was used to pay $986.76 for two Ashley Madison subscriptions starting in February 2013. The subscriptions were canceled in May 2015, shortly after the molestation story surfaced. In November of that year, pornographic actress Danica Dillon filed a lawsuit against Duggar, claiming he assaulted her to the point of causing her physical and emotional injuries while they were having sex at a Philadelphia strip club earlier in the year. She later dropped the lawsuit, but then tweeted, just because something was dropped doesn't mean it was a lie. And a few years later, in 2021, Josh would be convicted of possessing child sexual abuse material, the likes of which Special Agent Gerald Faulkner said were in the, quote, top five worst of the worst that I've ever had to examine, end quote. One of the videos allegedly in Duggar's possession was created by Australian murderer and rapist Peter Scully and depicted the rape and torture of an 18-month-old toddler. This conviction is the reason that Josh Duggar is sitting in prison as I speak. There are so many scandals to cover related to the Josh Duggar story, but it was the initial scandal that happened in 2015 that led to the release of the Law & Order SVU episode, Patrimonial Burden, which came out in November of that year. The episode was heavily inspired by the headlines about Josh Duggar molesting several girls and even directly references the Duggars by name. Considering this episode aired less than six months after the story about Josh dropped, 
I was surprised at how much it nailed the aesthetic of fundamentalism. Spoiler alert, there is an abundance of khaki. Growing up in fundamentalism, I hated wearing khaki. But you know what I don't hate? Drinking Magic Mind. I've been trying Magic Mind for the last couple of weeks. It is an incredible nootropic that is a great addition or even substitute for your morning cup of coffee, and I've really been enjoying them. Uh, for those of you that know me, you know that I am an energy drink fiend, and as much as I love the taste and the routine of drinking an energy drink, the caffeine and energy drinks really doesn't do anything for me. Uh, it I can drink a 20-ounce Red Bull, go right to sleep. And it definitely doesn't help me at all cognitively. Like, it's fun to sip a Red Bull in the morning, but it doesn't do much for my mind. Most of the time, if I feel any effect, it's just that my heart's racing a little bit and I get a little bit sweaty, which isn't necessarily the desired effect of your morning beverage. These drinks do have some amazing ingredients like lion's mane and matcha and a bunch of other things you can read about over on their website. But when I drink them, I literally feel like... Uh, my mind is opened up and I'm able to focus and it just makes me feel a lot better, which is something I cannot say for coffee or energy drinks as much as I do love them. I never talk about companies that I don't personally use and enjoy, and that's why I'm talking to you about Magic Mind. And there's no better time for you to try Magic Mind than to visit right now because they're doing something very special for listeners of the Preacher Boys podcast. You can get 20% off your first purchase or 56% off your first subscription when you visit magicmind.com slash preacherboys and use the discount code preacherboys20. That's magicmind.com slash preacherboys with the promo code preacherboys20. Go check out Magic Mind right now and start feeling the difference today. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to drink this and then we'll get into the show. From the wholesome family that's a bit too wholesome to where it becomes borderline creepy to the speaking tone of the mother figure who's obviously a riff on Michelle Duggar. See, it isn't easy with a big family, but we always pull it together. To the sheltered kind of awkward attitude of the oldest son, they get the feel of the family right. Now, the religious denomination is never expressed said the pastor that's depicted in the episode is wearing a clerical collar so he's clearly not an independent fundamental baptist or even part of the iblp world but again i get that's an easy identifier for audiences to go hey that's clergy so we'll let that one slide the episode itself opens on a creepy yet familiar scene for fundamentalists it's essentially a purity ball they call it a virtue ball in the episode and she passed out at a virtue ball our virtue ball. And it's a dance where daughters promise their fathers will stay virgins till they get married. It features a 13-year-old girl named Lane pledging a vow of purity to her father, Frank. To keep my thoughts virtuous. To keep my thoughts virtuous. And abstain from all sexual activity. And to abstain from all sexual activity. Until the day you give me to my husband. Until the day you give me to my husband. This event is being filmed for the family reality show Baker's Dozen, which is, of course, absolutely not a riff on 19 Kids and Counting. As she's dancing with her father, Frank, at the Virtue Ball, Lane faints and is taken to a hospital where doctors discover she's three months pregnant. Surprise, surprise, the parents and their pastor slash lawyer, Gregory Eldon, don't want to cooperate with the special victims unit. Instead, they'd rather let local law enforcement take over. They did promise to take it up with their local PD, but Seems like they don't trust outsiders very much. Maybe they're just protective of their kids. You mean their brand? I mean, look at what happened with the Duggars. Word gets out that one of those virgin Baker daughters is hopped up. There goes the TV show, the book deal, the multi-million dollar chats to the yeah. Empire. Rollins, these people, they take the faith very seriously. Immediately, I couldn't help but be reminded of what happened when the initial abuse by Josh was discovered by Jim Bob Duggar. He talked to his friend and Arkansas State Trooper, Joseph Truman Hutchins, who filed no official report, but instead gave Josh a stern talk before Josh was shipped away to a faith-based program called Reformers Unanimous for just three months. It's worth noting that the trooper who failed to report was himself later sentenced to 56 years in prison for possessing child sexual abuse material. To make the connection even more explicit, the episode directly alludes to a version of these exact events in the episode when the SVU discovers that the baker's oldest son, Graham, has a history of sexual assault and was sent to a reform camp. Detectives Totola and Carisi visit Allensville, the hometown of the bakers, and talk to the local judge to figure out why there is no record of the assaults. Yeah, we understand that he got in some trouble a few years back. Uh, you sentenced him to a reform camp, Camp Righteous Path? You can't tell you that? Because I'm mistaken. I did suggest that Graham spend some time there, but that was in my capacity as an elder of the church, not as a judge. 
It's constantly shown and even verbalized on screen that these are highly insular communities that deal with issues in-house whenever possible. As the whodunit continues, we cycle through a variety of potential suspects. The show's cameraman, who possesses some sketchy videos of the teen Baker girls, the oldest brother Graham, who as I mentioned has a history of sexual assault, and the family pastor. I'm not going to spoil how this episode ends, you can watch for yourself to find out. I'll just say that anyone who followed the Duggar story for any length of time will probably find this episode to be relevant and interesting as a viewer. The most important takeaway of the episode, for me, comes from the final moments of the episode when Sergeant Mike Dodds and Lieutenant Olivia Benson discuss the case. Well, for what it's worth, Dodds, most rapists don't hunt on the streets. They hunt where they're trusted. If only more pastoral staff and people sitting in the pews of churches understood that. If you haven't watched this episode, I definitely encourage you to check it out. If you have watched the episode, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on it. If you didn't know that they did a Law & Order SVU episode, I'd love to know if this introduced you to it. But yeah, I really appreciate this episode. I thought it was really interesting and well done, and I thought it would be of interest to all of you. Big shout out to my mom for texting me the episode because I would not have heard of it otherwise, and I know she is binging Law & Order SVU like crazy, so I appreciate her forwarding it my way. I did reach out to the director of this episode who said that she directed a similar uh, themed episode later on, which I'll be covering in a future episode as well. So let me know what you think. I know it's a little bit of a departure from what I usually cover, but I thought it was relevant and would be an interesting uh, detour for people who are kind of delving into abuse by clergy within fundamentalism. So thanks so much for watching. I will catch you on a future episode. Again, if you're a first time listener, thanks so much and shout out to our good friends over at Magic Mind.